Thank you very much. Great, happy Easter, like I said. If you're new to church, you don't regularly attend church, maybe you're someone who's the first time you've ever come to church, or maybe you just come at special occasions like Easter, and so like today you might think, oh, it's all about Easter again, well, come on another day. <laughs> so a heads up, I will be referencing Easter quite somewhat during this message, but if you're not a churchy type person, uh, you might like it, because I'm not even going to le- read one Bible verse. Oh, <gasps> gasp. On Easter, I know, it's shocking, shocking. And I'm going to be short and sweet today. Who exhaled? (laughs) Who is Spartacus? (laughs) Who liked the intro video today? Josh is awesome, like that spoken word. I like it even better than his rapping, he's pretty good at rapping as well, that spoken word stuff. But the words are actually written by our uh, music crew leader, Matt, as well. I thought it was bang on, I really like the words in that. Fantastic. And... It meant I could steal the title for my Easter message. So I was, um, I was <laughs> very happy about that. And it starts off with this line that says, One day, one day changed everything. And, and one day can change everything. In your own life, and you think about it, one day can change everything. And I, I want to pose a question for you today. And I thought about it for myself as well. But... Can you recall the most impactful or memorable day, most important day of your life? And I actually asked my son this last night. We were on the couch. He was watching a movie. And uh, I said, what's that? And he looked at me and was like, nah. (laughs) No, no, I can't really think of any. Not not one good thing. (laughs) No. But most of us, I think, can, if we, if we track back and think back, we can think of some, maybe just one, but maybe many. But maybe you've got one that sticks out, the most impactful, memorable day of your life. And for some of you, it might be that, that first day of that dream job. Or maybe that first day of that promotion where that extra finance made a huge difference to your family, took you out of poverty, or made something where you could clear your debts, and it made a huge difference. That one day, that one thing, that one promotion, that one day, entering that job, entering university, getting that, getting that scholarship, whatever it might be, you can think of that one day. Maybe for you, it's that, the day your first child is born, that, that, that first moment you know, where you suddenly fall in love with another being in, an, in a split second. And some of you in the room are going, that wasn't my experience. <laughs> I had to learn to love Joel. He was my first baby. And some of you were like, I can't believe you said that. But for mummy, it was like, boom, day one. On that one day, everything came to like this pinnacle point And it was like, boom, this love. Where I'm like, I don't know you. I'm going to see if I like you first. <laughs> No, it took time and many, maybe many men can relate to that, of just sort of growing into that rather than that one day. But some people, it's that one day they can really feel it, they can trace it back. Even emotion comes back with that memory of that one day. Maybe for you it's when you met your spouse. You can remember that day, that day where you glanced across the room and saw them. Or for me, it was when Steph was at the front of the bus singing loudly, being a Muppet, and I was at the back of the bus, college bus, thinking she is a Muppet. I remember that day perfectly. And so for some of you, it might be that. For others others of you, it might be your wedding day. Maybe you're on your wedding day. It's that one day you can remember. Really important, really impactful time of your life. And that one day carries weight. Perhaps for you, that day or a few days like that are the greatest day and they changed everything. Yet, (laughs) if we're really honest, I think those sort of days, those 24 hours, probably aren't the most impactful. When we're talking about one day, when we're talking about 24 hours, they're probably not the most impactful. Maybe they are for you, but for, for many, maybe for most, perhaps for most, the most impactful one day, 24-hour day, was negative. It was the day their spouse left. It was the the day the person died. It was the day they were betrayed. It was the day that they found out the results of a medical test. It was the day, whatever. On that day, one day changed everything. And for some of you in the room, perhaps that carries more weight than the good one days. And you're not against the good one days, but really they were just part of 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 a lot of good days and a journey of days. But those one days that were terrible were the ones that changed everything. And for why is that so common in life? And I think it's really simple. It's, it's this, is what takes a lifetime 
to build, you can ruin in one day. What takes a lifetime to build, what takes lots of creative planning and putting all the wheels in place, it just takes one thing in one day to ruin it. What takes ages to construct takes only one day to destroy. If you've got more than one child, you know this easily. Like One child creates something beautiful out of something. It takes all day make it, and another child comes and destroys it in a moment. And so what can take a long time, an age, an eternity even to construct can be destroyed and ruined in one day. And there's a saying that Rome was not built in a day. Rome was not built in one day, but Hiroshima was flattened in one day. And when sin entered the world, in one day, everything changed. In one day, everything changed. And I love the words that Matt wrote in that spoken word poem. It says this, one day changed everything. Man and God separated by sin. His creation was separated by the sin that came from us. And what was once united became suddenly, suddenly, in one day came suddenly divided. So on this one day, man and God were separated and there was a chasm between them. And if you look back in your life, you, you'll understand how this works. I think all of us can relate to it if we think for it for more than just 30 seconds. You can take years building a relationship, whether that's a, a romantic relationship, whether that's a friendship, whether that's within family. You can take years building a re relationship, but it can be over in a day. You can take years, you know, if you're into this sort of thing, restoring a classic car. I couldn't do that, but <laughs> you might take years doing that, but in a day, one accident could be wiped out, written off. You can spend years planning towards something and one mistake and it's all over. And I think a dude who, who might have felt like that on a particular day was particularly Peter, the disciple Peter. He probably could relate. His, probably his worst day was Good Friday. Probably his worst day of his life. He gave up, I want you to think about this, he gave up three years to follow this dude Jesus who he was, he was caught along with. He, just, he could not not do it. He just gave up his stuff and followed him because he believed that Jesus was who he said he was. And he gave up three years of his life because he thought Jesus was going to change the world. And, and boom, in one day, Good Friday, to him, to Peter, it was all over. It was done. You know, when Jesus was taken... And he, he fought, you know, he chopped a guy's ear off. This is a, this is a uh, sort of guy. He was like, this ain't happening over my dead body. And yet Jesus told him no. And so when Jesus was taken and tortured and beaten to the point where Peter wouldn't even be able to recognize Jesus, even his most courageous follower in Peter didn't even admit to knowing him. Three times Jesus even told him he was going to do it. To the point he was so scared, it was so over, that he, he wouldn't even admit to knowing Jesus, let alone be on a cross next to him. And so, in one day, I want you to think about this. He gave up everything to follow this dude, placed all of his eggs in that basket, excuse the pun. But their, their rabbi, their teacher, their leader, his saviour, his friend, <laughs> bled out whilst nailed to a cross. And for Peter... It was all over. Peter's worst day of his... Peter, I want you to think about this. Peter's worst day of his life, and we call it Good Friday. We call it good. And for Peter and for humanity, that one day changed everything. That one day... And for the disciples, I really want you to think about this. For the disciples and all of his followers, that one day changed everything. And seemingly for the bad. And so, what was your worst one day? You can probably, you can probably pluck that out of the air quicker than you can pluck your best one. It's probably easier to remember, but perhaps, and just perhaps, maybe you let that one day define your life. You've let that one day define your life. And the hard thing that happened to you, you meant, <laughs> effectively, you gave up hope for anything better in the future. Perhaps like Peter did in that moment. Because Peter ran away. Peter had done. He, was, he, he just assumed everything was over, but he was out of hope. And maybe that one day in your past 
That one day that changed everything has, has defined your life and you don't have a future and a hope for the future. But I want to say that in Jesus there's always hope. In fact, he's called the hope of the world. That's like his, it's like his Twitter nickname or strap line or what, what do they call it? Handle. Is it Handle? Don't do Twitter. But on Good Friday, he, he died and <laughs> Jesus put <laughs> death on trial. I love this. That there must have been an awful day. Jesus died and they carried his body away. But in that one day, he died in that one day on Good Friday. But that one day of Saturday, on that Saturday, Jesus was dead. And he put death on trial <laughs> in the spiritual realm. And Jesus was resurrected on that one day, the third day, and in doing so, punctuated everything he'd said about himself. He punctuated everything that he'd taught. He punctuated everything that he'd claimed about who he was. And yet, no one, not one, on that one day was outside the tomb counting down. And a ten, nine, eight. Nobody, nobody was there. It was all over. They'd given up hope. Peter wasn't even there. The women weren't even there who, who found him. They weren't there for that time. For Peter had given up because on that one day he knew he'd bled out on the cross. So he'd given up and perhaps sometimes your, your one days, your one day in the past makes you want to give up. But Jesus had other ideas and it wasn't all over. I want to say this, it wasn't all over but it was finished. Jesus said that. It is finished. He didn't say, it's done. It's all over. Give up. Go home. He said, it's, it's not all over, but it is finished. And it was finished. And he uttered them words on the cross. It is finished. And what was finished? It was, the, it was complete. It was finished. The plan had come to fruition. The plan leading up to this one day had finally come. It's all done. Because there's two definitions to one day. Isn't there? There's two definitions. One is 24 hours. One day. Our other definition of that is one day. One day I'll be. One day I'll be an international rugby player. I will not be an international rugby player. But one day we have that hope for the future that one day something will happen. Our dream, our hope that one day. We have two definitions. One day, 24 hours. But we also have one day and a hope for the future of what is to come and what is to be. And God's dream, his one day, was that he would be reconnected with his creation. That was God's dream, that one day that this would happen. And so, <laughs> God's dream, his one day, was you. His one day was you, was being with you, was being with you again. And one day Jesus changed everything. But it, <laughs> what's funny is it wasn't just one day. And I'm not, I'm not dissing the words to the song because of the spoken word thing because it's so deep and nuanced. But it's not, it's not just about that one day. And we celebrate this one day and it's the most important one day ever in the history of ever. But it wasn't about the one day. It was every day before and every day after. In fact, I would say that history is centered around that day. Like everything is organized around that one day. And so it is that one day, but it's everything either side of it. Every single day in creation, I want you to think about this, was planned out to lead to that one day. It wasn't like, oh, God, just like, we'll stick this day in like a birthday or something. It's like everything was leading up to this one single day. Every single day in creation was planned up to lead to that one day so that you could be reconciled, so that I could be reconciled to our Father in heaven, that you could have a relationship with the creator of the universe. Everything was laid out to lead up to that one day so we could be with our Father in heaven. I want you to think about this, that we can minimize this, but like a wedding day is really important, isn't it? <laughs> like we've got someone who's got a wedding day coming up soon. She's only been waiting a little while. <laughs> That's crazy. Maybe we're going to that one day. But, and, and there's a lot of weight and importance on that. For a couple and for the family, the wedding day is so, so important. And yet, it is just one day. And maybe the life is centered around that pivotal point. But there's all the stuff that led up to that day. And the, the relationship building. And all the planning that led up to that one day. And from that point, there's lots of days. I've got to warn you. There's lots of days after. 
Well, there's time and energy and purpose in them days coming after. And so, <laughs> that one day is important. And it sometimes takes years of planning, but it's also years of living out afterwards. And so, for me, Resurrection Day, on the Easter Sunday, that one important day, that one special day is great. But every day before led up to that one day, so that one day you could spend every day with God. That one day, every one day before, every single one day before led up to that one day, so that one day you could spend every day with God, with your Father in heaven. And I want to say, don't minimize that. Don't minimize that. Don't box that in, that Easter Sunday tradition. And I want to say, especially if you're, you know, from church culture, but you're not really into it and you come as a sort of a out of duty, I want to say, don't minimize that. That whole of days, all of days led up to that day for you so God could re reconnect with you. And God planned it before the beginning. And I love this. You can, you can infer from Scripture that God planned it before day one. He planned it before time itself. That day one. That, I'm a good planner, but that is some, that's some next level planning. And he planned it before time itself that one day that he would die for you. And for me, that shows how important you are to him and that's how much he loves you and that's why I think he would allow his son to be tortured for one day so that one day he could be with you that's how much he loves you and, and me I've got I've got four kids but one son but the thought of allowing my son to be tortured and killed that I could at some day in the future that one day that I could spend time with someone that I loved just doesn't compute with me. God loves you that much that he would allow his only begotten son to die for you, be tortured for that one day so that one day he could be with you. And I put it this way, that I think he went through one day of hell so one day we'll join him in paradise. And he said this to guys on the cross. There was a guy on his left and a guy on his right and they were sort of bickering and arguing and and one of them was like to Jesus, oh, aren't you like terrified? You're, you're on a cross and dying for something that you haven't even done. And, and he could recognize perhaps who Jesus was. And he said, will you remember me in the, in the next life, in your kingdom, after this is all over? And Jesus said to him, yes, I will. And, and in fact, this day, this one day, you will join me in paradise. And so he went through that one day of hell. So one day we will join him in paradise. And it's not just about heaven. It's not just about when we get there, but we have him living. If you follow him, if you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life, the spirit of God, the spirit of him lives inside of you every day, every one day since that day. And I love the end of the, the spoken word poem that, that Matt wrote, and it says this, but God had a dream. Take the two and remake one. Take the two that were separated, mankind and God. Take the two and remake one and pay that price through his son, sacrificed and undone. He undone the thing that made us divided. He undone it, not us. It's through grace. It's not through anything that we do. It's just through grace, through him loving us. And it says this, I love it. His dream became a reality. His, his one day, God's one day of wanting to be with you became a reality through the ransom that was provided. What was once divided, he eternally, I love this, he eternally reunited. One dream, that one dream that the creator of the universe had was to be with you. One way to forge reconnection. One day, one grave and one resurrection. And he exchanged this, his one day. Jesus exchanged his one day in payment for your one day. He exchanged that one day in payment for your one day, for your future, for everything going forward. He spent one day dying so one day you could live, so that every day you could live, so every one day you could live. And like I said, every single day since creation of the universe, it led up to that one day. Every single day. And every single day since that one day was a result of that one day. 
Resurrection Day was the most important day in history. And maybe we could call it day one. (laughs) Maybe we can call it day one. That one day was day one, that first day of reconnection with God. And it was all time, all days center around that. And every day before it led up to it and every day after it was affected by it. And so I want to ask you again, what is the most important day to you? Because it changed everything. What is the most important day? What was the most important day? Because it changed everything. Because sure, like one day I met Steph. And can I tell you, it changed everything. And one day I had kids and it changed everything. But one day I met Jesus. And it changed everything. That was my day one. That was my day one when I met Jesus. (laughs) Because in that one day, it changed everything. One day changed everything. So I want to ask you, what will you do with this one day? What do you do with this one day today? If you follow him, if you've already given your life to him, do you thank him? Do you praise him? Do you worship him? Do you love him? Do you follow him? Do you give your life even for him? And maybe for some in the room here, maybe it's this one day you actually decide to to trust in him and believe in him. And if you don't know Jesus as your saviour, you know, I hope one day you will. I do with all my heart. I hope one day you will. But maybe instead of thinking, maybe one day, is use this one day to press in and seek God. And on this one day, you can find him in Jesus Christ. And why not make this one day your day one of following him, of accepting him, of being reconnected to your father? Let's pray a moment. Lord, I just thank you for the weight and magnitude of that one day, of the power that you showed over death, that you went on the cross and bled out for us to cover everything that we've ever done wrong, everything that we're going to do wrong, Lord, that you paid the price for us. And that just wasn't just an important day in history for the world, but it was what the whole of creation was centered around. And Lord, let us not minimize that. So Father, for people in here who who follow you, who already know you as Lord, Lord, that we wouldn't minimize that and we'd understand that, sure, this Easter Sunday is really important and we want to celebrate it as a church together and as individuals and as families. But we want to understand that, that your living power lives in us now and onwardly. That we're not just about an Easter Sunday service, but that we follow you every single day of our life. And this one day we choose to follow you. This one day we choose to worship you, to to praise you, to give our life for you. But for those in the room that have maybe been on the fence or, or not thought about it much, Lord, that who'd like to come to know who created them, who thought of them, who designed them before time even began. For those, Lord, I want to encourage to take steps towards you and to understand that it says that if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, that we'd be saved. Lord, you sent your only son, your only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him will be saved. So for those in the room who have never done that, never made that commitment, never uttered those words, Lord, I encourage them to seek you and to understand that you went through that one day so that one day they could spend every day with their Father in heaven. So we thank you, we worship you, 
on this day and every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cool beans.